big screen, now I can hear you. Viv, go to the Viv. Are you who's <clears throat> Viv? Vivian? 
Can you roll page two for me, okay? Just a second, Jimmy, let me... Uh, Viv? Yeah? You want to roll through page two for me and let me have a look at it, read it? Good evening. The president has finally decided he will explain to the nation what has been going on between his administration and factions in Iran. Mr. Reagan says he wants to set the record straight, that to do so now is in the national interest. So what does all this mean? First, here's our White House correspondent, Sam Donaldson. Thanks, Libby. Yeah, hi, Marty. Okay, let's settle down. We have about a minute or so. Okay. Charlie? Jennifer, we got to find Yes. So are you in full on there? Oh, Jennifer, just put that up. Put that, that other chair up there where that one was. Mm. Oh, my God, are we? Oh, I think we've got... Well, Bill, I'd rather drop uh, the Allenby Bridge because because 3A is is our reason for being here. I could cut it down. Stand by. Okay, hold on. Let's get on the air first. Mike, we could take the first paragraph out, okay? Take a look at 3A, Mike. You can, okay? say overseas there has been fairly wide. Mm. Good evening. The president has finally decided he will explain to the nation what has been going on between his administration and factions in Iran. Mr. Reagan says he wants to set the record straight that to do so now is in the national interest. First, here's our White House correspondent, Sam Donaldson. Viv, put 3A in. Here in Europe. Viv, move it up, please, lovey. Bill, we're going to pick up 3A one paragraph down. Go ahead. Here in Europe. Go ahead, Viv, keep going. P oh, there is A, yeah, right. Viv, we're going to put it down. Overseas, there's a fairly widespread belief that the administration... Take out over here, Viv, and put it... Take Just strike it over here. Yeah, okay. Viv? Viv? Tell Charlie. Charlie, we're going to change a roll cue on you on page four. We'll strike out the line immediately before ABC's Britney and Mike. You better go over and do it, I think. We're going to strike out his own party is no longer in control. The leadership in the Senate has changed hands. ABC's Brit Hume is on Capitol Hill.
Well, overseas, there is a fairly widespread belief that the administration is very concerned about a recent improvement in Iranian-Soviet relations. The two have recently agreed that Iran's natural gas pipeline to the Soviet Union will be reopened. The Soviet and Iranian deputy foreign ministers have exchanged visits. And what impact will the president's speech have on the Congress, where there's already been a lot of criticism? Bear in mind that while the administration has been doing what it has been doing, the leadership in the Senate has changed hands. ABC's Britt Hume is on Capitol Hill. Bill, do we need? Do we still need help on time? Bill. Bill, do we still need time? All right, take out. Take out after on page fourteen, Mike. Mike, get out after the words that other American weapons left Spain. Take out the rest of that sentence, okay? ABC News will carry the president's speech live at 8 o'clock Eastern time tonight. There will be a full discussion afterwards on the content of the speech. And Ted Koppel's guest later this evening on Nightline will be Robert McFarlane. In California today, the former hostage David Jacobson had some comments on his captivity in Lebanon. Jacobson, who also said again that speculation could endanger the remaining hostages, sent a message to his former captors. There is a history to this arms trade with Iran and a lot of people involved. We'll have that story when we come back. Bill, how could somebody screw up something so simple? I, I stopped because I figured they're going to go to the video, and then the, and then his voice popped in right away. Was that my fault, Bill? We sent it to them a long time ago. Because the whole, the thing we wanted to say, we wanted him to say is, I was valuable property. They weren't going to harm me. That's the best news. Do you want to try that again? Here we go, Viv, to the top. You may recall that we first learned of what the administration was doing with Iran through a pro-Syrian magazine in Lebanon with connections to Iran. Well, today the same magazine reports that the president's former national security advisor went to Iran twice this year, that Robert McFarlane was not arrested but simply stayed while the arms he had arranged for were tested. The overall operation did not begin with McFarlane. Here's ABC's Bob Zelnick.
Charlie, you're getting it. You're getting it. Copy of page 14. I hope. Mike, tell those people not to look at the camera, okay? Yeah. yeah. To the read. Okay, that's good. Thanks. It's blinking on the uh, narrative screen. Hmm. I would argue against a Quantel here, but... It is still very difficult to comprehend the scope of the arms shipments to Iran. In West Germany today, an Iranian opposition leader in exile said that a TWA plane had carried 23 tons of arms from the U.S. for the Iranian Air Force. TWA denies it. Other Iranian sources overseas say that arms were transferred from Israeli to Iranian cargo planes on the island of Cyprus and that other American weapons left Spain. The most outspoken people on the subject have been Danish seamen who worked the ships that carried the arms. Here's ABC's Charles Glass. Bob Zelnick. Yeah. What? Yeah. Bob Dalabas. Okay. Do you want me to put it first? Charlie? No, it's on. Okay. Later in this broadcast, a 3,200-mile march for peace is about to reach its destination. And the British discover the child abuse hotline. Uh, forget 18. Okay. Let's just get established on the on the voiceover Jacobson piece. Why don't you, Bill? They'll get the right sound bites for the Jacobson piece next time. What do you mean modified? All right. So what if we take out the first paragraph? In California, the former hostage had some comments on his captivity. He said his captors were not going to hurt him. And then, cut back the second paragraph, Jacobson sent a message to his former captors. Okay, fine. No, that's not correct. That's not correct, though. 
I'll explain to you in a minute. While most of the news from the Middle East is usually about tension, we can report today an international gesture of peace on the King Hussein, or Allenby Bridge, across the Jordan River into Israeli-occupied Jordan, a couple of hundred Christian pilgrims from the United States. They held hands and they sang songs of peace. They decided to do so after they heard the Pope call for world peace. Well, that event on the bridge took place across less than 100 yards. The Great American Peace March, as it's called, has now covered more than 3,000 miles. On Saturday, after walking all the way across the United States, a group of men and women against nuclear war planned to arrive in Washington. ABC's Carol Simpson caught up with them near Baltimore. Bill? Okay, so my proposal, you see, I think the most interesting news out of this for the long term is that nobody was going to harm the hostages. They were too valuable property. So if we said in California today, the former hostage David Jacobson had some comments on his captivity, you could go straight to the soundbite, I was valuable property. Then I will say, Jacobson also sent a message to his former captors. Okay, fine. Okay, you want to fix that? Gosh, I like her narration. This is a very good piece. Washington on Saturday. There was an incident in Washington today which may well increase the friction between the United States and the Soviet Union. Federal agents went to the office of the Izvestia correspondent and began to seize some of his assets, including his typewriter. The agents and a lawyer were there on behalf of a California businessman who'd won a $400,000 lawsuit against the Soviet magazine correspondent. The magazine had falsely accused the businessman of being a spy. When we come back, the first child abuse hotline in Britain 
It is flooded with calls. Okay, and we'll drop the 27, right? Feels good, Bill, so far. You say you have a problem. Yeah, okay. Hey, Viv? Viv? Who, who abuses you now that I've left? <laughs> comfortable little environment in which to do this. It is not at all uncommon, as you know, to see and read stories about child abuse in the United States on a fairly regular basis. It's a public subject of concern. That has never been quite the case here in Britain, and it isn't true anymore. Not long ago, someone gave out a number on television which people could use if they knew of a problem. The response was overwhelming. ABC's Mike Lee on what happened. Quiet, please. That seems to be in 28. What? 28 dead. 28 dead. Right, thanks. Oh. 